Okay, so hi everybody. Basically, uh, I think you know why you're here. We're going to be starting the Facebook ads webinar for mortgage brokers. I want to thank everybody for joining. I think we've got a lot of you from my broker pro company as well as the group, the newbies group on Facebook. I think everybody's from all over the place, all over Canada. So welcome. A little bit about me. My name is Sarah Matu. I've been in the mortgage industry for about six years now. I was a broker, then I went to the bank, and now I'm back to the dark side as a broker again. So um, I used to be a high volume producer, I have around 45 million a year in uh, volume, but I've since transferred that part of my company to my husband, who's been a broker for about a year and a half now. Um, we started a company through currently Dominion Lending, which is called Mortgage Tech. And as we kind of grew that brand itself, I noticed how much work marketing was and I was pretty much doing it as a full time job and being a mom. So uh, that's how my broker pro was born. Basically, I was doing everything for mortgage tech. Anyways, I transferred that knowledge, the templates and the social media management onto my clients with my broker pro, which we now have over like 700 members as part of our website from mortgage brokers and agents across Canada. So many of you, I believe, are from there or from our Facebook group. Um, but even though I own a, mar a marketing company, I actually know nothing about Facebook ads. I've done some in the past, um, just myself. I've never really paid a company because, as you guys know, that can be expensive. Um, but I haven't had much success. The odd lead here or there with, you know, depending on the campaign, some campaigns had no leads. <laughs> I've spent uh, hundreds of dollars and just eventually given up. But then Rashad and I uh, started talking and he's had lots of success for it. So on that note, I'll welcome Rashad. Um, he's joining us today to tell us about how he conducts his business with his uh, Facebook ads and other platforms, of course. A little bit about the process. He's even going to give us like a sneak peek on his current ads and what that looks like. Um, so enjoy. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate uh, you guys having me. Sarah, thank you very much for allowing me to do this. Uh, this is super fun for me. So I'm going to, if I speak fast again, tell me to slow down and, you know, being my nature, being Lebanese, I'm going to talk with my hands. It's what I do. So um, we're going to start with talking about like a little bit about Facebook. And, and just so you understand, I've spent probably near $30,000 on Facebook in my lifetime. Uh, and that's how I learned. Um, so I, in 2019, got heavy into dropshipping and had a lot of success with it. So uh, a lot of the dropshipping business, which is very quick, you you don't really hold any product. You create a website online. People buy things that ships from China directly to their house, but you get all your clients through Facebook. So I had to buy courses. I had to follow people on YouTube and make tons of mistakes to learn what I know today. So um i've recently learned how to transition it to lead gen and i was telling sarah earlier that because i work in the automotive business i wanted to try and automate this process as best i can so that when i come home from my daytime job i have a calendar full of leads that i can attend to through uh through zoom so i'm gonna show you guys my funnel today the setup i have how i create my ads and everything okay so we're gonna get started um hopefully you guys can see the screen so everybody say hi to yourselves Good to go. Perfect. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so we're going to start with Canva. So you got to have access to the following systems to do what I'm doing. You can see Canva, right? I'm just double checking. Yes. Perfect. So you got to have Canva. And obviously, I highly suggest you get the pro uh, version. If you've been following Sarah, she's big on Canva. So obviously, um, you know, she probably has some tips and tricks on how to use it. You don't have to be a genius to create something on Canva. It's super easy. I created these myself. Uh, this was my biggest winner. And you can see how super simple it can be when you're creating uh, when you're creating a Facebook ad, right? Um, so that was my that was my biggest winner, which I'll show you guys different ad campaigns that I've that I've done. Um, but uh, I'm just going to show you like an overview of everything, and then I'll show you guys in detail on how I created them. Okay. This is the Facebook campaign. So I, I don't know how to set up your Facebook ads manager because Facebook has done a lot of updates and I set up mine six years ago. So you'd have to figure out how to get to this screen, uh, which is basically uh, your ads manager uh, when you get in and then uh, through your ads manager, uh, 
um, you can set up your campaigns. This is different from managing your campaigns through your Facebook page. Okay, guys, like through your Facebook page, um, you know, you're boosting posts, this and that. That's a that's a little bit of a waste of money because in here you can really target and detail where you want to go. They click on here. There's two ways to do it. They can do a lead form where it captures the lead within Facebook, or you can do a traffic ad, which I'll show you guys how to do. Which then you'd have to have a funnel system set up, which I use Get Bonzo. They're very new into the market and they're very tailored to brokerages, uh, like uh, mortgage brokers, and they have a phenomenal, uh, very easy to use like an automated system where it just kind of shoots emails, text messages, drops voicemails, uh, has a landing page that you can use and so on and so forth. So I've tested a couple landing pages, which I'll share with you guys. And the last thing you need is to make sure that you have Calendly and yes, pay for Calendly because you got to have multiple calendars set up for multiple purposes and you want your calendar to be uh, branded. So when you're coming into here and you're they're landing on your calendar, they want it to. They want to be able to see this. I don't want to see any powered by Calendly. We got to look as professional as we possibly can. In here, always type out what they expect during the call. And if you're like me, you're horrible at grammar. Make sure you get um, a grammar. I think it's called Grammarly or something. Um, it's it's phenomenal. It fixes your grammar. That way, you look super professional. So that's the overview of the entire funnel that I have set up. And then in here through Calendly, when they book an appointment, they get an automated email that sends them to my Zoom link, my Zoom meeting, and then it bombards them with text messages the day of to make sure that they're gonna show up. Um, and I, again, also pay for Zoom. It's very important to have all your stuff paid for so that you don't have any interruptions or anything like that. So to create a Facebook post, okay, so first of all, you gotta understand where you wanna advertise, okay? Do you wanna advertise during the uh, video reels? Do you want to advertise during the stories or do you want to advertise as a Facebook post? The reason why that's very important because the size of your ad is going to make a difference. And you can Google all the sizes when you're, when you're looking to do it. So I know that when I'm going to create a design and I go custom size and I do 1800 by 1800, that's a Facebook post. Okay. And that's mainly what I do. Your cheapest form of advertising on Facebook will be traffic ads and pictures, not videos, but your most effective form of advertising on Facebook will be video, especially for retargeting. So you can do something very simple like this. You grab a nice little square, you make it nice and big, right? You grab some text, you add it in here, you type out your message, and then lo and behold, I'm gonna sign out and show you guys what I created in less than two seconds because I have two Canva accounts, don't ask me why. I gotta go back here, but um, so I have, I think it's this one. This one, yes. So I created this in two seconds, okay? It's just a black square, okay? My logo, a red, apply now, why, that's it, simple. I found the most simple ads are the ones that are the most effective. When I went into Facebook, this was the create campaign that I created yesterday. And I had three different picture ads. And you can see that the only one that got leads was this one. Every single, every other ad did not get any lead. That's it, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how to set this whole thing up. So first of all, when you're in this, in this area right here, there's a couple things that you need to look at. First, you hit the create button. These are the different types of uh, ads you can create. So what's your goal? Do you wanna create awareness for your Facebook page? Do you wanna drive people to your website? Do you want to chat with people or do you want leads? You want, you don't have an app. Some of you do actually apps are starting to become popular in the mortgage world. And then you want to create sales. This one won't be for us. This is if you're selling an actual product online. Okay. So the two that you will, the three that you will use the most are these three right here. Okay. Traffic is your cheapest form of ads because what's happening is you're saying Facebook, I need you to target somebody in this demographic and then they're just gonna leave Facebook. So Facebook no longer tracks the data past that, okay? So when you get into, you choose traffic, for example, and then uh, you gotta name your traffic campaign. So for me, it's always been the LendHub 100K loans, okay? You gotta choose a category and it has to be credit because there's a whole thing about discrimination with age and you can't choose like, you know, I wanna target, uh, females from, you know, 35 to 45 or, you know, families that make over hundred K, you can't do that anymore. Leave countries alone. 
Okay, and then if you want to A/B test, you can. Um, at Advantage campaign campaign budget, this is a little advanced. You don't need it for the way I set up my ads. So maybe at a different seminar, we'll kind of go over what it is. It just spreads your budget. You give the campaign a budget versus ad sets, which I'll go over what that is. Okay. Then when you hit next, so the way it's set up up here is this is your campaign, this is your ad set, and this is the actual creative. Your ad set is the data you're gonna feed it. Who do you wanna show the ad to? How do you wanna show them show them the ad? How much money do you wanna spend? Where do you want them to go? This is the guts of the ad itself, okay? So in here, you always leave it on website traffic, okay? Your daily budget, guys, you're gonna see on, Facebook, on YouTube, Facebook, $5 a day, no, you have to spend money. If you're gonna do this, you're gonna spend $1,000 and you're gonna get results. Um, so if you're gonna put, it depends on how many interests you do, but you can start with $10 in interest. And then um, that's usually pretty good. And we're gonna run minimum five interests, maximum 10 interests, okay? That's per day, okay? So you gotta, you gotta make sure you've got the budget to be able to stomach this, okay? Now, when you scroll down here, you don't worry about custom audiences. Don't worry about any of this stuff. The only thing you gotta uh, focus on is the location. You can choose your province. In my case, it would be Ontario. And then once you type it in, you can even go down to your city, depending on where who you wanna target, you would choose that area. Over here, this is mixed reviews. You can put that you want people that live in this location or you want people that currently visited it. If you're doing your city, you wanna do people living recently in this location uh, because People are going to visit, they're going to come, you know, check out houses, people that are moving there. You want to be able to target those people too. It really depends on the ad you're creating, right? So that's where, that's kind of like up to you in a sense. None of this stuff you can touch because we're running a credit uh, campaign, so it's unavailable. So we're just going to skip it. This is the funnest part right here. Now you have to put your thinking cap on and go, okay, so if I'm targeting people that are looking for a loan that's a lien against their house, First, I'm gonna write uh, mortgage. I'm gonna write the word mortgage and it's gonna spit out a bunch of suggestions for me. So I'm gonna start with mortgage loans and it'll tell you there's the size is 144,000 to 160, sorry, 144 million to 169 million. That's the size of the amount of people that are following this interest according to Facebook. Based on your $10 budget, you're gonna reach anywhere between 1,200 people to 3,000 people and you're gonna have 21 to 69 clicks a day. This is not 100% accurate. I've had more and I've had less. There's a specific metric that I'm gonna show you guys that you have to track and it'll make a lot of sense for you, okay? Um, next here, advantage placement. You're basically saying Facebook take all my money. You don't wanna do that. You wanna be in control. So we're gonna do manual placement. And then what you wanna do is if you, I always uncheck these two. It's up to you if you wanna do Instagram or Facebook, but keep in mind, when we go back to Canva, the size of your ad, right, can only work in certain areas, meaning that an Instagram feed picture size is different from Facebook. So make sure you have different variations of your ad if you're gonna run it in different areas. I uncheck them. I've never had success with Instagram advertising. I've always had my leads come through Facebook, okay? So now you're gonna go through them, uh, you know, category by category. I uncheck all of this stuff. Unless I'm doing a video, then I would obviously do video feed. I would do anything that has to do with videos. But if I'm running a picture ad, then I would do anything that has to do with pictures. So the search doesn't work. In article, I keep sometimes, because if you've ever been on Google and you find an article, especially now that the, uh, you know, the rate hike came up and there's always these ads in the middle of your article, that's what this is. Okay, so if your ad is attractive enough, uh, somebody might click on it. Um, and then down here, you don't touch anything. It's really as simple as this. Now, when you hit next, um, sorry, you go back for a second, you gotta name the ad set. And I always name the ad set, guys, the name of the interest. So mortgage loans, so I know what it is, right? Mortgage loans, and then I do $10. So I know how much I'm spending, okay? And then, I go into new traffic ad, and in here, if you had face, uh, uh, Instagram, it would connect your Instagram page right here. Make sure you have a Facebook page. So you can see I have multiple Facebook pages that I manage. So right through here, and then you gotta add your media. And in here, you'll find all my ads that I've ever tried. 
you have to be careful with what Facebook uh, allows you to advertise and what they don't allow you to advertise. I got my account banned for 24 hours for having arrows. You can't have arrows on your Facebook ad. Okay, I learned that the hard way because you're manipulating people to click somewhere. So keep it very simple. It, it, it helps big time. I already created this ad right here. So when I go next, it tells me you want to keep it original. Next, done, we're good. Our app, our ad has loaded, okay? Now, when you're coming down here, you want to type out some kind of a text that's going to be appealing. You got to keep in mind your first X amount of characters show up as the person scrolling. They have to hit read more in order for them to be able to see the bigger picture. So for example, if I'm trying to get people that are going to sign up for the and get a loan, I want to hit them with the problem and then hit them with the solution, such as, are you tired of your bank turning you down? Or is it time to unleash your equity? Or stop stressing, let me help you. You know, taglines, right? Again, we want to keep it super simple and think of the customer that's going to apply for this $100,000 loan that needs money no matter what their credit score is. Who do you think is applying? It's people with very bad credit and they just need a chance. They need somebody to give them a boost. So, um, you know, you can say things like unleash your equity and take control of your life again, right? And you can see on the right hand side, it's right there. Now, you want to always throw an emoji. Facebook loves emojis, okay? This is all algorithm based, right? So if you right click in here, you hit emojis and symbols, you'll find many different ones. It's a little bit finicky, guys. So you really, it's going to frustrate you sometimes. But I always throw them in between words. And then I come out here and I go, you know, and take control of your life again. Um, if your bank keeps turning you down, we won't. And then that's all the customer is going to see, right? Now, if they want to know more, then they're going to see um, we lend you up to 70% LTV on your home. Uh, your credit score does not matter. Everyone deserves a second chance. If I made a typo mistake, it's okay. We'll fix it. <laughs> and then I always put check marks because you wanna you want validation. It's marketing, right? So I put, you know, I put three or four of these and I reiterate what's in my ad because that's what I'm advertising. So borrow from your home, right? Instead of the bank, 100K funded within 48 hours after approval, right? Which is all true stuff. LendHub does do this. So don't, you know, you don't need to lie, right? Like pick a lender and advertise their product. And that's what I did, right? Uh, any credit score is welcome. And then lower your monthly payments okay by 50 percent now this one is a little bit in the gray area obviously if they're paying three thousand dollars a month in in credit card debt then yes a lend hub loan would be only 1500 bucks and they'd be saving 50 percent so uh these are all valid points and then you have to put what we call a call to action so a call to action is sign up now hit the button apply now somebody will get back to you you need to do this it has to be compelling, okay? So um, apply now and get a response within minutes. So when they apply, I call them within minutes. That's my that's my way to go, okay? And then you always want to throw, you know, another emoji somewhere in there. I like this guy. He looks like uh, I think his name was Josh that had the cool shot. That's the guy. So we're gonna go with that, and then. Headline is right here. So this also has to be a call to action. So, um, you know, apply uh, now and get approved. Okay. And then they have the learn more. You always want to switch that to apply now. So this is basically how you're going to create the ad. There is no right way, there is no wrong way to do this, okay? This is based off of what you, how much you wanna filter the customers. If you start to put, you know, book now, or, uh, you know, learn more, you're gonna get soft people. 
you don't be excited about having 50 leads and you only close one. I'd rather have 10 leads and close one than 50 leads because it's just a waste of time. So I would rather it says apply now so they feel like they're applying for the loan. They've already bought into it, right? Into the website, website URL, that's where you're going to put your landing page and that's where Bonzo kicks in. So we go back after I created this entire ad, I go back to the ad set. The reason why you want to create the ad and then create your ad sets is because as you duplicate your ad sets, it will carry over your ad. Does that make sense? So now I come into here and I hit duplicate and then I go, I duplicate it once. Don't duplicate it 10 times. I'll explain to you why. You can duplicate it one time because when you come over here, this is, remember, this is where our interest was, right? You hit suggestions, it starts to suggest things for you. And as you change the interest, it's going to suggest different things for you. So if you only had mortgage loans in all 10, you're only going to see these suggestions. Okay. And this is where the creative part comes in guys. What is your customer seeing? So for example, if you're advertising, uh, financing for new construction, okay. You would advertise to people that like home Depot. And then it should pop up home Depot. I've done home Depot in the past. I don't know why it doesn't want to pop up there home. Home improvement appliances. Anyway, you get the point. Home repair, home construction. It's done Home Depot for me. It could be because of the credit thing, right? Like when you choose credit, it really restricts what you're doing. But regardless, you want to think of the customer that you're that you're advertising to and what are they interested in. And believe it or not, I've heard some people have success with Ellen because a lot of families watch Ellen, another one that won't show up. Jesus Christ. But anyway, there's there's what they call broad interests. Um, targeted interests, you know, and the more you narrow it down, the more Facebook is going to charge you. Right. So with all that being said, we're going to hit suggestion and we're going to say, um, where is it? So personal finance would be a good one, right? Because we're talking about people's personal finances and then you come up here and you have to name it, right? Because you want to know what ad is doing well and what ad isn't. Okay, and then you come in here and you duplicate. Now I'm only gonna do this two more times just for the sake of time to show you guys. But what you do wanna do is you wanna get 10 of these going, right? That's the ideal way to go. See how it spat out different ones? Finance, now you got money, now you have financial planning, financial services, right? Now I wanna go back to mortgage loans because I know that's a good one. And guys, I know that we're, there's a lot of people in here and, and you're all gonna advertise against each other, but trust me, there's enough fish in the sea. We're all, we're going to compete against each other on a very minuscule level. Okay. So don't worry about, you know, all of us going out there and creating the exact same campaign, um, over and over and over. I know pre-qualify lending, uh, is a good one. I know refinance is a good one. Um, so on and so forth. Trulia. I heard you mention that the other, uh, earlier anyway, credit cards. Those are all good ones. Okay. So, um, once you've created your your ads, uh, sorry, I gotta create, I gotta add one in here now. We'll do. Uh, did we do mortgage calculator? No, we'll do mortgage calculator. Mortgage calculator is actually a really good one too. You'll see that they're coming up because I've done these before. Calculator, ten dollars. Okay. So, um, any questions so far in the chat or anything? Anybody just want to kind of make sure? No, everybody's good. All right. Um, we're going to go back. So now you can see that we've created our ad and it stayed on every single one of them. Okay. Now, once we're done, we, you don't want to hit go because you haven't even set up the funnel and you haven't told Facebook where they're going. Okay. If you sign up to get Bonzo, your Bonzo is a bit expensive, but it's a really phenomenal system. And I reached out to the owner and he said that he would hook you guys up of some sort. So um, I'll give you guys his email. You can reach out to him. Just mention my name, say Rashad through the seminar, and then he'll help you guys out and uh, show you guys how this works. But this is a really, really simple system to use. This is my dashboard. These are all of my leads that I've gotten through Facebook. I've got 96 leads through Facebook. I haven't been really good at setting up my stuff. If you really dive into this uh, system, you can create campaigns that, that are like that don't end refinance campaigns and you put people into different categories, so on and so forth. I go into here and I create a landing page and this is what the landing page looks like. Very, very simple. 
Okay, I don't know if that was somebody. Please mention Rashad's name for Bob. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, so when you get, you can upload your logo. It's super easy. I'll show you guys how to do this. But what's nice about it is it's nice and easy. So they, you know, they fill out the name, and then uh, Sami uh, email r at rag.com, whatever phone number. Boom, boom, boom. And then loan purpose. I need to pay off credit cards, right? And once they're done signing up, oops, they actually get into my funnel right away. They'll get a text message. So they enter a campaign. Okay. So when you go into here, I'll, I'll show you how I created this. You see how easy it is? I can move the pages around. I can add fields. You can add as many fields as you want. And guys, the more you filter through this process, okay, the better quality lead you will have. But again, don't be disappointed when you see 500 clicks and you've only had four leads and you're asking 30 questions. The idea is, is the lead that made it through the entire funnel is a very well qualified lead. Okay. So once you're in here under your settings, you can actually set up your Facebook pixel, which is its own um, subject. So a Facebook pixel in a nutshell is think of it like a bug that latches onto you as you surf the web. So any of you ever experienced when you Google Nike and then all of a sudden you're on Facebook, you're seeing a bunch of Nike shoes on sale. And then when you go visit a house and then you start to see all these houses for sale, um, that's because of Facebook pixels. So when you set up a pixel and then you set up the pixel ID in here, it'll track who made it here and it'll follow them and show you your ads, show them your ads some more. And what's nice about this pixel is it's like a brain. As you feed it people, you can then start to create custom audiences, which is what we saw in Facebook. And those are the most lucrative audiences you can get your hands on, okay? When you create custom audiences, you're basically saying to Facebook, any person that fits this profile and browses the web like this person, serve them my ad. And it starts to serve ads to high quality people, right? And then um, you can put a disclaimer, you can do whatever you want, but you got to tell it which campaign it's going to. That's the most important part. So I've got them landing in here. When they're done, it ends. They can click book your appointment now. And what happens is they end up directly into my calendar. So we skip the texting process and everything, which is exactly what I want them to do. Or they'll end up in my Lend Hub Loan campaign. My Lend Hub Loan campaign is communicated right through here. So if you see, uh, if, if I come here, I click here. Yes, this is really simple. Day one, day two, day three, day four, how many days do I want? I can keep going and going and going. You can set up a hundred days worth of follow-up. It does not make a difference, okay? And then how many events you need it to do. So my first event is a text message and hi, person's name. So it knows everything. I am Rashad, here's my company. I'm glad you're ready to unleash some of that equity and get started. Here's a link to my calendar, book a time that makes sense for you. If you want me to call you right away, please reply to this message and I'll call you. And then here's a link to my calendar. 10 minutes later, it'll nudge them in an email and tell them, listen, I have access to 65 different lenders. I know that you need to talk to me. If you're looking for money, here's a Zoom, here's a time to book your call. And then four hours later, it'll text them again and it'll say, hey, did you book your appointment yet? And right here, I usually get them almost every time. They'll be like, no, sorry, I was busy at work. And then as soon as they respond, it stops the, the campaign. So then I can take over through my conversations, okay? Where I can chat with people in here, okay? Day two, I shoot another text, another text, and then another text, okay? And then day three, so on and so forth. Usually though, I haven't had anybody make it to day three. I've gotten everybody through day one because again, right? Bad credit, they need money bad. They're more in a hurry than I am, right? So typically I've had a lot of success. And when they get in here, they end up in my calendar and then I get a notification through Zoom and Bob is your uncle. So this is basically how we set up the Facebook ads, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trigger this campaign and, uh, and then I'm going to show you guys the metrics, how I, I keep up with the metrics and what's important to track and how do you know that your ad is doing well, okay? So let's go back into here. We're gonna copy paste that. Where's my ads manager? So by the way, to do this guys, I hit shift and I clicked. I held shift on my keyboard and I clicked. 
This allows me to edit all the ads one shot, right? So I don't have to go in them one by one. And then I just paste my, my URL. Make sure you hit preview. Make sure it's landing here, guys. I've made this mistake so many times. $80 later, I'm going, why did I not get a single lead? So then you hit publish. And Facebook is very funky when you do this, okay? You have to be very careful on uh, on under publish because sometimes it won't publish everything, okay? So let's unclick the selected campaign. Let's go here. I'm going to click here. Just make sure everything is published. So it says ads are inactive. You got to give it a minute. You always, so first of all, when we're creating the campaign, we started with the goal of the campaign, went to the ad sets, right? Goal of the campaign, ad sets, and then the actual ad. That's how you create the ad. But when you're managing the ad, you're doing it backwards. You're starting from the creative and you're working your way down. This stuff here is set in stone, right? So over here, Usually you want to have more than one picture ad just to test. So that's what I meant by you have to have a budget. Okay. You have to be okay with spending about 150 to $200 testing three to four different images to see which ones are going to work. Okay. Then when you see which ones are going to work, you're going to start to turn off the ones that aren't working and then you can start to up your budget from there. All right. So now we're going to go into two campaigns that I've created that have results. So we're going to start with my videos. So this was a traffic campaign. I did refinancing and mortgage loans, and they were $50 each. That was a per day. Here's my results. I had original ad, second chance, and struggling. These were three videos that I had created. Um, let's go maximum so we could see the, uh, the results. And so you can see that I was spending $50 a day, but that's the ad set budget. Okay, So remember, I wasn't spending $50 a day per creative. Okay, I was spending 50 bucks per three, basically. Okay because it's on the ad set level. So over here, when you're doing a video, these are your metrics. This is how you're gonna measure whether your stuff is working or not. My presets are very simple, which I can go over these with you if you, have, if you need any help. For video, I've set up presets where these are the things that I wanna know. Here's the most important metric of all. It's called a CPM. What's your cost to reach 1,000 impressions? First of all, you need to know what an impression is. Think of a billboard on the highway. And if you're driving by the billboard, you're an impression, okay? Now, when you actually look at the billboard, you're considered a reach. That means you've actually read the message, okay? So an impression is, is showing up on somebody's newsfeed, but they just kept scrolling. A reach is they actually stopped and read your ad, whether if it was two seconds or three seconds, it doesn't matter. So how much does it cost you to reach a thousand people? So if you are spending $2, to reach a thousand people with $10, your ad is going to go a very long way. You'll see an ad that I created yesterday that cost four times this to reach people. So it gets harder or you have to have a bigger budget. When you have a higher CPM, it's a direct correlation of a couple things. One, people are not responding to your ad. They don't like it. They're scrolling by it too fast. Two, there's too much competition in this interest and or space. Three, you're asking Facebook for too, too deep and qualified information. So you'll see that the type of ad, the type of campaign that I'm choosing will directly affect my CPM. So my video uh, ad got getting $10 on here is actually $11.93 is actually really good because you'll see in my other campaign that was a picture. So picture is always cheaper than video, right? Not this one, sorry. This, this one right here. My CPM was $57 per ad set. So you can see that that's a big difference. The reason why is because it's a lead generation, not necessarily my get bonzo um, uh, funnel, okay? Which I'll show you guys how to do the lead form. It's very, very easy, okay? Now, when I'm back here and I'm looking at these metrics, I wanna know how many impressions I had, how many people I've reached, how many clicks. So ideally, you always want one click per 100 people, okay? or your cost per click to be, if it's on a traffic ad, under 50 cents, if it's on a lead form ad, under $3, okay? Your click-through rate should be over 2.5%, 3%, anything higher than that is ideal. So you can see that my click-through rate was amazing with these, okay? Now, my video average play time was 3 seconds, 3 seconds, 6 seconds, 5 seconds, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 3 seconds, and 3 seconds. This is where I could have done some improvements. 
So I'm obviously not capturing people's attention for them to stay on there that long, okay? These are very important to know how many people are watching your entire video through and throughout. So if a bulk of your, your, your people are watching 50%, then you wanna get your message out at the beginning. This is how you're gonna know whether your ad is effective or not on video, okay? Now we're gonna switch over to my picture ad that I created yesterday that bombed, in my opinion. Um, and again, yes, you, there's no proper way to do this. It's trial and error. When you get a good, a good ad, leave it alone. It's very hard not to, not to uh, play with it, mess with it, stop it. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll share with you guys my theory on, on, on this entire thing, right? So this ad, Home Equity here spent $68 today and got me three leads, okay? $67 got me four leads and $34 got me one lead, okay? So my cost per lead overall was pretty low. Now, out of these eight people, I can tell you right now, one did not answer, seven I got a hold of, and unfortunately, out of the seven, none of them had a loan to value under 70%, so I couldn't help them. Two of them are closing in a week on a refinance. It is what it is, and I've got one guy that I'm working on a refinance. So I might actually close one after spending $170. Not bad. Now, these are the pictures, right? Now on a picture ad, it's very different. What I'm tracking is my CPM, which I found to be really high, okay? My CPM should be lower than this. My reach and impressions, my clicks, and then my cost per click. So you can see how I spent $6 on this picture ad and got no clicks. So I turned it off. I spent $2, so what Facebook is doing here is they're sending money to this picture because that's where we started getting leads. So Facebook started ignoring these and sent here, which is why you want to keep your campaign going for seven days before you make any changes to it because Facebook at some point is going to go back and start to feed some of these pictures uh, some, uh, some money in order to see if they're going to work or not. But my cost per click here was $6. That's insane. Okay. So you always want to try different types of creatives. All right. Now, I did talk about that I was going to show you guys how to set up a lead form. That's really, really easy to set up. When you're going into the campaign, where are we here? Let's hit refresh. Aha, oh, Jesus, that was fast. They usually don't approve my ads that fast. And Facebook will take forever to approve your ads, about 24 hours to approve your ads. This is the first time they've done it this fast. This is really cool. We're gonna be able to maybe see some kind of result live. Um, so in here, if you ever wanna create a, a lead form, again, you're just gonna go leads, instead of traffic, right? You're gonna hit continue. Now it's gonna ask you for a campaign budget. Advantage campaign budget, no, we don't want that, okay? And in here is where you choose your interests and everything that you wanna do, right? And then down here in your creatives, you do wanna make sure all the way at the bottom you can create your own lead form right through Facebook. It's super easy, guys. This is what mine looks like right here. You're one step away, so when they hit that picture, right, they landed right here. My Facebook page background shows me and my boys, right, in Ottawa, wanted to make it very family friendly, our brokerage logo, Capital Mortgages with Richie, one step away from your loan, thanks for inquiring, Richie will be in touch with you shortly. Remember, to qualify, you must own a home. I had to add that, guys, because I had so many people thinking that I was lending money just to pay off credit cards and they didn't own a home. So it was a waste of money, right? So do you own a home? Yes. You hit next, and then they fill out basic information, and then it says thank you. And then they can book a Zoom meeting. Again, if they can get to Zoom uh, to my calendar and book an appointment, that's beautiful. That's exactly what I want, okay? This form of ad is more expensive than a traffic ad. So I haven't compared it to tell you if my $50 or $50 CPM was expensive or not. Um, I have not done that kind of a comparison. I want to show you guys, we're going to actually, uh, I'm going to stop sharing and go back to my uh, my camera here. Um, I have a bad habit where I delete ad uh, campaigns after I'm done with them, which is not the smartest move to do because you've paid for all this data and now you don't have access to it. But uh, I, I am very antsy that way. Um, and I wanted to see, it used to always be available on my phone which I don't have access to it either. Okay, so never mind. I wanted to show you guys that there was a campaign that I ran, that pickle campaign that I ran. 
I must have gotten over 36 leads and I was telling Sarah about the Lend Hub loan that I did this morning for this guy and now it's turning into a refinance potentially and like it's yielded me some really good results. So if you guys have any questions or anything, now would be the time. I didn't dive deep into how to create your Calendly uh, and how to create your Bonzo uh, and how to create Zoom um, because you know I, we can go on and on and on for hours, but uh, <laughs> that's basically the overview. I'm going to jump in before questions start. Are is that uh, all for you, Rashad? Yeah, I'm going to grab a cup of water, guys. I'm dying. Yeah, <laughs> let's give a slow clap to Rashad. <laughs> that was amazing and a lot of info. So just so you guys know, it was recorded. Um, if I'm successful in getting the recording afterwards, um, I will definitely share it um, either on my broker pro or any of the Facebook groups you guys found us in. Um, I did want to share as well with Canva for those of you who do have it or don't definitely check it out. My partner link is in the uh, messages here. So you would get a 30 day free trial if you want to check it out. It's only like $17 and honestly, in our industry, it's well worth it. Um, I do all my presentation templates there at my Facebook. My I've got like 100 and something marketing clients that I all do in Canva. It's an amazing tool. You can schedule everything in there too. But what Rashad was talking about creating the ad, if you're not very creative in making this kind of stuff, if you just go into the search bar of Canva, you can literally just type Facebook ads, Instagram ads, mortgage ads, and it'll give you ideas. Of course, it's kind of blank templates, but it, it gives you a starting point to see what it looks like if you're not, you know, being really creative in what you want it to look like, or just need like a starting point for a reference. I actually want to mention something to you as you're scrolling through Facebook, if you see an ad. So first of all, if you want to be served good ads to see what they look like, Google refinancing my home, Google it two, three times, click links, Go into your Facebook and start scrolling. You'll get served ads. Hit apply now, hit open the ad, watch the entire video, and Facebook will just keep feeding you and keep feeding you. And you'll start to see good, nice ads. And then I take screenshots when I see yeah. good, so I can go back to it and kind of see what they're doing. I, I'm like I said, I haven't had success with Facebook ads, but definitely when I see something I like, I take a screenshot because I'm like, yeah, yeah I want to re redo this and duplicate it. So that's awesome advice for sure. So um, that was kind of all I had. And so I'll jump in. I did have a question, uh, Rashad, and then we can um, go through if anybody else has one after. Feel free to put it in the chat or just take yourself off mute after and um, ask Rashad your awesome questions. So basically, what mine was, because I in the past, I've been creating ads myself and like I said haven't been successful is there a difference between the housing and the credit special category like I kind of was under the impression we should be choosing housing but I saw you choose credit so is there a reason or uh, no I, I, I chose credit because I figure we refinance we do financial loans yeah so that's why I went with credit but I don't think there is a difference I think any of those yeah. specialized categories basically locks anything you can do in terms of choosing a specific demographic that's what uh, i've noticed as well like you said yeah. kind of like if it's off you can definitely filter and have all these extra options and if it's on you can't and just so you guys know if you think you're going to be slick and and not put the special housing category in or credit um your ad will get blocked and <laughs> you won't be able to run it so it's not one of those that you can trick facebook because facebook is smarter than all of us so <laughs> But um, does anybody else have questions for Rashad? If you guys memorized all that in the last 45 minutes, I expect to see some good ads out there on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, well then we won't take up anybody's uh, time for the rest of the evening. For those of you who are in Ontario, it's well past dinner time and you guys can hear my kid is um, itching to come downstairs. So <laughs> thanks again for joining and I'll send out the recording as soon as I can and hopefully see you guys on the next webinar. Um, Sean, the picture size for Instagram uh, I don't know, but you, you just Google it and it'll give you all the ratios. That's what I do. I don't remember that. I don't memorize them. I just Google it like uh, a good size for Instagram feed and it'll give you, it'll give it to you. Um, Canva does it as well. Yeah. I, I, I think they're preset in Canva too. Yeah. Yeah. You can use the, if you have Canva pro, you can use the resize option. And then if you um, don't have Canva pro, then you can't, but it'll still show you what the size is. 
All right. So if anybody has questions, do feel free to type in the group. I'll I'll try. I'll do my best to answer them. If you're having troubles setting it up, I will do my best. Uh, you can mention me, and then I will come in and and answer them. So, good luck. Let's let's share our results. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna stay on the line just so that I can hang up. But bye, everyone. <laughs>